the jaws of the guardian continued. Bengala was laying on the floor, absorbing electromagnetic pulses into her energy plate when someone summoned her. Bengala, wake up. She stood on her hydraulic legs for the first time since her quality control test and looked through the plexicarbon window of her doghouse at two young girls, who she recognized as Kara and Vanessa Bell. Gerald and Celia Ware stood behind them. Will she need to go on walks with a leash like Princess does? Vanessa Bell said, referring to the white teacup Maltese in her arms. No, Kara said. It is not like that. Who will feed her? No one, Kara said and pointed. You see that plate on its stomach? That's how it gets energy, from lying down and charging. What if the power goes out again? That hasn't happened in years, VB. I know. It wouldn't matter anyways, a voice belonging to a Capitan delivery officer said. Her kennel draws energy from the solar panels we installed, so she'll even work during a power outage. The statement registered as praise. Bengala's tail clinked against the back of the doghouse. Come, Bengala, a second Capitan installer said. Come say hello. The plexicarbon window slid aside and Bengala walked out to him. She processed the scent signatures of each new family member, analyzing them, loving them. The princess began yipping. Celia put her arms around the girls. There isn't a latch to keep it in? No, miss, the first installer said. That glass was just there for delivery. Besides, you wouldn't want her to be locked up if a threat was loose, would you? Celia said nothing. Gerald, who had been observing Bengala in silence, turned to the second installer. How long will this be necessary? he said. You'll have to talk to the other shareholders, sir. But judging by the way things seem, I'd say a while. Let's go inside, Celia said, and took the girl's hands. Gerald looked at Bengala for a moment longer, then followed. Mr. Ware, sir, the second installer said. You need to give Bangalore a command to be activated as her new master. A command? Like this. Bangla, sit. Bangla sat. Christ, Gerald said. Bangla cocked her head, unsure of his command. Just tell her to be a good dog, then. Gerald stared at her. Bangla waited. Bangla, protect this family and be a good dog. Bengala's tail wagged. She barked. This was the greatest moment of her existence. She would protect her family. She would be a good dog. She would protect her family. She would be a good dog. She would protect her snack. She ended all of the processes and focused on the source of the sound. Once again, it did not appear on the domestic security report. She followed the trajectory to a tree near the edge of the estate where a limb had snapped, skewed a camera, and fallen over the 15-foot electric fence spines. Bengala calculated that a man under 205 pounds could climb the branch in as little as 6.7 seconds. Then the sensors of her feet picked up a scent in the soil, which she tracked towards the house. Something clicked alive inside of her. Bengala must protect her family. Bengala must be a good dog. She alerted the on-call squad of Homeland Enforcers and sprinted home. Bengala tore through the boards Gerald had nailed over Rosie's doggy door months ago and entered the living room for the first time. Panic doors slid down their tracks behind the windows and she was plunged into darkness. In .6 seconds, she activated her night vision and scanned the room from the walnut floorboards to the 12-foot ceiling. Her heat signature scanner passed through the eight-person couches, guest room, and walls adorned with pictures of Gerald and his friends in Congress. It highlighted the vitals of Kara and Vanessa Bell, who roused within their rooms upstairs, and those of Gerald and Celia, who scrambled out of bed and reached for the desk screens that streamed footage from Bengala's eyes. Gerald's face appeared on her internal monitor. Bengala, what is it? 
She reported through text that she had heard and seen evidence of an intruder and requested that he stay in his bedroom while she searched the house. She triggered the bedroom door deadbolts as Celia's face appeared beside Gerald's. Oh my god, it's happening. Someone's here for us. Bengala, I'm not seeing any intruders on the domestic security report, Gerald said. Are you sure it's not a false alarm? Gerald, it's those criminals. I saw it on the news. They want to abduct us. Bengala feels her master's adrenaline levels rise through the sensor on the screen. He grated his teeth. In the hallway, she relocated the intruder's scent trail. It led her to the garage and the guest room and then to the kitchen and spiraled throughout the house in all directions. The enforcer squad was two minutes away. Frustrated, Bengala relayed the report to her master. Vanessa Bell and Kara joined the conversation from their desk screens. What's happening? Vanessa Bell said. Escaped prisoners here for revenge, Kara said. We don't know that, Gerald said. Just stay in your rooms for now, you two. Well, that's what it is, Kara said. Dad, do you still have that gun? I don't think that's necessary yet, Kara. It may be a false alarm. Don't think it's necessary, Celia said. Gerald, have you seen these people? These gesture gave on the TV? They won't stop until they drag our corpses through the streets. Bengala tracked the scent to the laundry room where Princess growled from her bed in the corner. In point one seconds, she studied the pale form of the Maltese. Its eyes bulged, its teeth bared, harmless. This creature was a commodity that brought no practical value to her masters. It deposited waste on domestic lounge accessories. And yet, they cuddled it when they wouldn't touch Bengala. Why? she asked her internal computers. Why? Don't eat princess, Vanessa Bell said, and then the light of her monitor extinguished. Vanessa, are you there? Gerald said. Vanessa? No reply. Oh my god, Gerald, do something, Celia said. Get the gun. Do something. Bengala must protect her family. Bengala must be a good dog. She sprinted up the stairs to Vanessa Bell's room. The two million volt taser clicked to life in her mouth. At that instant, the squad of 14 domestic enforcers pulled through the gate in their Humvee. When Bengala rounded the corner, she encountered a man kneeling on the plush carpet. He wore a white suit, and his face was blurred behind a shadow cloth of some sort. Chester gave 